See, the thing is, you need to break up with fear. Fear is not your companion, it is not your friend. And fear will hold you down and will hold you back from the fullness that God has for you. I'm not gonna run from the things, from the fear that is in my life, I'm gonna move towards it because I'm actually free. It is the freedom that Christ has set us free, but you've gotta move towards freedom and that means facing your fear. We're not in a series, so I get to go rogue today. Oh boy, here we go. Actually, how good was Father's Day? It was great. Like any of the dads have like a particularly great Father's Day. It was awesome. I had one of the best in, in memory. I don't know, I can't remember the early ones, but it was so good. I felt so loved. I felt so valued. It was awesome. How good was that panel last, Saturday, uh, last Sunday? So great. Oh man, we had a good time. We had a good time. Uh, and you're about to have a good time because you get me again this week, right? You're so blessed. Oh my gosh. Uh, um, just, I have a disclaimer on today, all right? It, it might get a bit intense. Just roll with me, all right? Just roll with it. Just look, just stay open to what God's doing. He's doing something in the room. He's doing something today. You don't wanna miss what He's doing. It's not just about a nice experience. It's about journeying to the next level of freedom. We've just been singing about freedom, praying for revival. We had communion like this. God's in the room. He's doing something. So don't disconnect just because I might tell a long-winded story. All right. <laughs> Which is coming. Um, I, I love those, um, those internet. Uh, Todd Oliver always sends them to me. Um, Love you, mate. And um, he sends, like, all those ones that describe how you injure yourself when you're just, you know, getting old and you're just doing normal activities. You know, I, I always think about the one where, you know, you're driving in the car and you check your blind spot and now my neck is like this for the next few days. You know, or you sleep funny and now, oh, my back, my back hurts for a whole week because I just, I just had a Funky sleep, right? Oh man. Uh, one, I, remember, I remember one of our old friends um, was at a, at a get together, a bit of a party and stepped down into, uh, like just stepped down onto a step and broke his foot. And I'm, I'm just like, oh man, you know, you know what I hate? I hate physically getting older. I hate everything about it. But you know what I love is spiritually getting more mature along the way. Because even though my body is breaking down slowly, help me Jesus, help me. Uh, actually, my spirit is getting renewed and refreshed and I'm walking into more and more freedom, more and more hope, more and more closeness with God. So the future's bright. And um, you know, and then when you get to heaven, you got a whole new body as well. So score, <laughs> score. Uh, some people are really happy about that. Awesome. Um, let me, let me tell you a testimony. Is that all right if I start with a testimony? Um, in November 2021, I went for a run after rehabbing a grade three ankle sprain for 15 weeks. I was like, it's time. I'm getting back out on the track. Here we go. Went for a run, came back. My back was pretty sore. And I was like, okay. And my son had just come back from the gym. And he's like, oh, my back's really sore, Dad. And I was like, oh, I learned this stretch like six months ago. Let me show it to you. <laughs> cool idea, Darren. Uh, so I showed him this stretch. And you know, the bottom part of your spine is kind of curved. It's like the lumbar part. Well, I kind of hyper moved it. So instead of being like this, it was a bit more condensed. I don't know, they call it hyperextended. I don't know, who knows? But... I injured my back, Not, nothing bad, nothing bad, nothing actually that bad. I went to the osteo and they're like, oh yeah, cool, cool, cool. Fix me up, send me home, cool. A couple of weeks later, I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good. This is all right. So I went and mowed the lawn, whippersnipped the lawn. And apparently this motion was not super helpful, right? And so I'm like, oh, my back. Oh. So I went back to the osteo and they fixed me up and I went home about two weeks later. I'm like, I'm feeling pretty good. This is all right. So I went to do the grocery shopping and I'm moving the trolley around. And I got back home and I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right? That motion, not super good. Um, I was learning along the way. Okay. 
you know, because you always think, oh no, I'll be fine. I'm young and hip and fresh. This is gonna be fine. (laughs) But after a little while, the pain just kept coming. And it didn't really matter what I did. I was in some level of pain. And then some patterns got established. And after a few months, I started to get worried. I started to worry that this is gonna be my future. This is gonna restrict all my hopes and dreams and things that I wanna do. And I started to fear. I started to get really, really worried and I would completely catastrophize. I know, I know, I know. It's, it's shocking, Pastor Nate, isn't it? It's shocking that Darren would do such a thing, right? Oh my goodness. Like I'm thinking I'll never play basketball again. I will never, uh, I'll never be able to run. I'll never be able to do lots of activities that I love. I'm like, I'll never be able to grocery shop again. What a shame. Um, but what was happening is that I was letting fear in. And fear was beginning to influence every single movement of my body. So every time I would stand up, every time I would move or walk, every time I would uh, have a shower or it didn't matter what I was doing. I was like hyper vigilant because I don't want to get a pain spike. I don't want to do any more damage. I was I was on Nurofen and Panadol 24-7 for months. I would take an ice pack to work so that I could ice my back because I was doing that five or six or seven times a day. And I was so steeped in fear. I was so worried. I, I'm like, what does my future look like? And what I didn't realise that It's actually fear that trains your brain to protect your body. And the way it protects your body is through pain. So my fear was embedding neural pathways that got so used to sending pain. And it was all driven by fear. And the fear would make the pain worse, which would make the fear worse. It was this horrible cycle that I was in. Until one day, I came back from a 10 minute walk because that was all I could manage. Three 10 minute walks a day. And I sat in my bedroom on the chair in our room and I I just cried. I felt like all my dreams were just crashing down around me and I just cried. And I was praying and I'm, I'm, I'm crying and I felt like the Holy Spirit said, go back to that article you started reading. So I got this article up on my phone, talked about chronic pain and back pain. I'm reading through it. And I started to realise how this whole thing worked. And I started to realise what the osteos had started to tell me and try to seed this idea that actually, Darren, maybe the injury's gone, but your pain still exists. And I was like, I don't comprehend that. So I I started to research all of this and learn how my brain works and how fear trains the brain and all of this stuff. And the Holy Spirit showed me some stuff and I just decided, you know what? I'm not injured. And I went cold turkey from Nurofen and Panadol. No more icing my back, none of that. And I started to train my brain with the truth that I'm not injured. My brain is just a bit over, overstimulated. It's a faulty alarm system. Everything turned around or began to, sh- to right the ship the moment that I realised and started to believe the truth. And I'm still working with that truth that my body is not injured. I've been 12 months on this journey now. I'm not running yet, but I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> See, the thing is, you need to break up with fear. 
Fear is not your companion. It is not your friend. And fear will hold you down and will hold you back from the fullness that God has for you. Like, look at me. Oh my gosh. All right. I'm just going to do the rest of this message. No, I'm just kidding. Like there are so many things that we fear. There's so many things that we worry about. Like I took on worry as a hobby. Right? Fear uh, about money, fear that our, our, kids, our kids won't come back to God. Like there are so many things that we try and control and manipulate and put pressure on because of fear. Fear about jobs and, and careers and money and, uh, and, and our spouse and all kinds of stuff. Fears that we won't amount to anything or fears that, uh, you know, we'll lose our business or lose our marriage. The list of things that you can fear and worry about is whatever is in your life. And I'm here to tell you that fear does not have to be a part of your life. That you can be free. In fact, it's imperative that we realise that fear is not our inheritance. Freedom is. Galatians 5 verse 1, here we go. It'll be on the screen as well if you're not fast enough. That's okay, I just didn't give you any warning. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has, past tense, set us free. Stand firm then, present tense, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Poor. So fear is not my inheritance, but freedom is. You should write that down. You should probably write that down. That's a good plan. Because in Christ, by the blood of Jesus, He paid for your complete freedom. The journey in Christ is a journey towards greater freedom. It is, in, it is inevitable. Your freedom journey is inevitable if you let the Holy Spirit do His work. I, whenever I hear of the word inevitable, I always think of Thanos in the uh, Avengers movies. I am, in, uh, what is it? He says, I am inevitable. I always think that, yeah, whatever, man. Transformation, breakthrough, freedom. That's what's inevitable if you keep moving with God. But here's the cool thing about being saved. Freedom is mine. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. It belongs to you. God is committed to your healing. He is committed to your growth. He is committed to your transformation into Christ-likeness. He is committed to your healing every day. Here's the other cool thing. Write this down. Fear is not my identity. We are, we, are, we are born again. We are made new creations. We are adopted by God into His family. Oh my gosh. And I've just said all those words and they mean so much and we gloss over them so quickly. Like take, take, take six months and just work out who you are in Christ. It will transform the rest of your life. And the influences on our past life, the influences in the world, the more we move into our identity in Christ, the more those things fade away. You know what I realised recently? That fear is empty. It's like an empty threat. It threatens to do something if you don't comply but the threat is empty. There's no basis. There's no truth to what fear is trying to tell you. Your fear is lying to you. Which is why walking in your identity in Christ is so powerful because it is based on truth. It is based on truth. Fear comes from this lie that I'm not safe because God has abandoned me. And so the key is to catch fear before it has the chance to embed. Before it has the chance to normalise. Before it has the chance to become part of your identity, part of your worldview, part of how you see life. 
I think the enemy tries to use fear to scare us off. It's like he's stuck this massive scarecrow in the middle of the field of your life. And whenever you go out to work, it's like, wee. Not like a normal scarecrow, like, you know, a kid's movie, but like a really, like, you know, Batman Begins kind of scarecrow. That guy was actually scary. (laughs) You walk around in life and you see some of your deepest fears and you just get, oh, it happens to you so that we, so that we'll back down. I realised yesterday on my walk that fear is warfare. Fear is part of the weaponry of the enemy against you. He's trying to convince you that living for God, advancing the kingdom, building the church, he's trying to convince you every time that it's not worth it. You know what I say when um, fear comes back? I go, lol. Like it's laughable that that empty threat would have any bearing on where I'm going in Christ. It's laughable. I, I, um, I grew up on Blackadder, a Rowan Atkinson character. Children, you should not watch it. Um, but I love what he said. he said. He said, I laugh in the face of fear. I drop ice cubes down the vest of death. He says, I tweak the nose of terror. And I'm like, that's how I start to think about fear. I'm just gonna laugh at it. Just be like, oh, you, you, you're coming back for some more? Ah, oh, well, you're empty, I don't care. Like I've decided that I'm not gonna run from it. I'm gonna move towards it, yes. right? Nicola Ude, where are you? You can testify to this because one morning when I turned up to work, there was an enormous spider in my wife's office and she was not there. And it was on the inside, on, uh, like on the, on the window. And all the Ush guys are like, mmm. And guess what Darren did? Darren's like, oh, I'll leave that for Beck. No, no, he did not. Darren went and got a broom and came in and broke the broom, killing, I've got, I have, I have footage, right? The last three, three texts that I got from you were the photo proof. And I'm like, kill this stupid thing, uh, right? Move towards your fear, not away from it. The other day, I turned up to work a little bit early, okay? And uh, I'm walking up the stairwell and guess what's on the stair? A massive, it wasn't that massive. It was about, uh, it was a t- teenager, a teenager sized spider. And uh, it was on the stair right there. So you know what Darren did? See you later, mate. And I get, I get in through the doors and Brandon comes running out and he goes, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he goes, oh, I saw the spider. It was like up, I couldn't reach it. I was trying to catch it. I'm like, you were trying to catch it? What is happening here? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I was just trying to get it. And uh, cause they, you know, he likes spiders. If you're watching Brandon or if you're in the room, I love you. Um, and he's like, are you okay? I said, yeah, it was on the stair dealt with it and moved on with my life. I'm not gonna run from the things, from the fear that is in my life. I'm gonna move towards it because I'm actually free. It is the freedom that Christ has set us free, but you've gotta move towards freedom and that means facing your fear. Like whenever we do a, a ministry trip somewhere, there's always some kind of pushback, some kind of pushback from the enemy. And for years, that pushback was insecurity. I I, I pretty much dealt with a lot of that. Sometimes it still ekes out though, doesn't it, Pastor Nate? Uh, But I'm pretty good. I'm pretty tiny, but I'm okay now. But these days, the enemy's trying different forms of fear. Fear that I'm I'm not ready for. I'm like, what is this crazy thing that I'm now in? And I'm starting to realise what fear feels like at the back of your mind. What fear feels like when it's coming in. Insecurity is just another type of fear, by the way. Fear that you're a nobody. Fear that somebody else will notice how invaluable you are. It's not true. Anyway, all right. I've got three ways that we can overcome fear. 
So get out your phone, write some notes. These three things have been incredibly valuable to me over the last three years. Number one, some fear is overcome by faith. Hebrews 11 verse one in the New King James says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what? I think through our choices and what we focus on and what we pay attention to determines what substance is being built in our, in our soul. Fear or faith. Uh, can I tell you another testimony? Another story? I'm like 80% through this one, not full. After we got back from Global Conference, uh, had this intrusive thought hit my brain from a scenario that happened ages ago. It wasn't even relevant. But it was like the enemy just hit, it, hit me with it hundreds and hundreds of times per day for a couple of weeks. I, it was beyond anything I've ever had to deal with. I thought I was going insane. And then I started to fear that the thought would come back. I started to fear that the thought would attach itself to other areas of my life. And fear is a driving motivator for those things. And fear trains your brain to think, oh, this is important, we should think about it. And so I just got really worried. And about two months after, uh, about two months, I had learned a whole bunch of like mind techniques to treat the thought as junk, as meaningless, as not a part of me, not anything that's come from me or who I am or my values or my future. But it was only in the last month that I realised that the whole journey was really about fear. And again, fear had crystallised in my mind. You can't get away from your own thoughts. That's a very hard thing to do. But you can learn a way of treating them, working with them. And so now this journey wasn't just about an intrusive thought, it was about intrusive fear. Fear had become substance in my life. And it needed to be slowly dismantled with faith, piece by piece. I love what Pastor Phil said on Instagram recently. He said, the family of fear is intimidation, timidity, anxiety, despair, doubt. You should take a photo of this. Unbelief, confusion, hardness, negativity, and complaining. And then he said, the family of faith is believing, trusting, courage, confidence, positivity, praise, thanksgiving, decisiveness. I love it. It's like when we identify that any part of the family of fear is playing with us, is in our heart, in our soul, in our life. We've got to work with the family of faith and the Holy Spirit to move in our lives and dismantle that substance of fear and build the substance of faith. You know those people who, um, who are so faith-filled, it's, it's kind of annoying. You know, those people who are just like, oh no, fully trust God in this. It's gonna be great. He, he told me this, I'm trusting Him on this. And uh, you know, you're kind of, you're, you're semi a little bit jaded because you don't have that kind of faith yet. Uh, but also you're like, oh, cool, that's great. No worries. You think they're stupid, but actually they're just in faith. And then the story of their life is incredible things that God is doing in their world. It's phenomenal how they're building the kingdom and you know, trusting God for things. They've got the substance of faith that has been built up in them through truth, through love, through walking with God, through, through the family of faith. They have had it built up. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what you 
can't see yet. It's evidence in your soul about your future before you have walked into it. Some fear is overcome by faith. Number two, some fear is overcome by truth. In both of these fear journeys of mine, truth was so essential. Because the truth of the Word reveals to us who we are, our identity, and what we have, our inheritance in Christ. John uh, John 8 verse 32 says, Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Do you know what that word know means? You will know the truth. The word know means personally experience firsthand. Then you will personally experience firsthand the truth and the truth will set you free. It's not just reading the truth. That's information. It's not even just memorising the verse that the truth came from. It is experiencing that truth personally for yourself. Not your parents, not your friends, not your table space, right? You experiencing the truth for yourself. That's what sets you free. And so it's this ongoing application of truth that establishes the faith that we need to overcome the fear. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So you and I are called, chosen to be free. But here's the problem. Here's what we do. We just keep choosing different types of slavery. Sin, well, there's a whole whole world of slavery there. Pick your poison. Doubt, fear, addiction, pride, religion. Pastor John Pierce talked about a poverty spirit and a materialistic spirit. Like, which, which slavery do you want to choose today? Which one? I love the verse says, let us stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Pastor Nate said to me a couple of months ago, here he is. <laughs> right on cue. Pastor Nate, I am so blessed by you in this journey of mine. I'm, I, it, it, this has been incredible that you've done such an incredible journey on this. And this is why we're in community, people. We're in community with people who love us because we don't do the journeys that we go through alone. We do it with the people who are in our lives. And so I'm super grateful for you, man. So grateful. Pastor Nate said to me, fear is insidious. And that means a lot. It means it kind of gets in and it sticks around. And the nature of fear makes it compound on itself the more attention and focus that you give it. And as you engage with it and as you entertain it, it becomes a thing that you never anticipated. And now you're a slave to it. And so we need to dwell on truth and live in truth and apply this truth because we need to let truth set us free. Recently, I was reminded of that, that acronym of fear. Have you seen that? The acronym is probably, you've seen it on probably, you know, Instagram or something, some quote, and it's F-E-A-R. Do you know what it is? False Evidence appearing real. I know. I was like, but I was reminded of that, that this is an, an empty threat. The threat is not based on truth. Truth by its nature, right? By its nature is true and by its origin is true. We've just been singing holy forever, right? Because the words that God speaks are above everything else. 
He is higher. He is greater. He's more powerful. And the truth that He says is way better than your truth. That's for someone. Some fear is overcome by truth. Number three, some fear is overcome by love. Oh man, this got me hard. 1 John 4 verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. In my intrusive thought journey, the, the fear was that it would come back. And by focusing on that, the fear, the, the thought obviously came back. But the more I, the more I thought and the more I prayed about it, the more I realised that that wasn't the fear at all. The fear was that the thought would come back and I would be alone to deal with it. And I realised that's never true. Because He's never going to abandon you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to leave you high and dry to deal with the problem by yourself. You're never going to lack the power. You're never going to lack the wisdom. You're never going to lack His presence. He's there with you in everything. I've cried more in the car in the last few months because it's, it's His presence and it's the promise of His presence. It's, it's leaning into God and knowing that He's there and knowing that He loves me and that He promises to love me and have His presence in my life in the future as well. Because at the root of fear is that I'm gonna have to face this thing alone. And that's never true for the Christian. That is never true for the believer. That is never true for the son or the daughter of God. That's just another lie. So one of the greatest practices that I did was to allow the fear to be a reminder of drawing near. I still do it. I'm not, I'm not at the end of this journey yet. I feel like I'm like 80, maybe 85% getting there. But His love, feeling and knowing His closeness and His love has been the biggest game changer for me. Because His perfect love casts out fear. It takes the power out of it. I'm here to bring you some hope today in whatever your journey looks like. However fear is, in your, is, is presenting itself in your life, however you're trying to control the outcomes, fear is not your identity. Fear is not your, inherit, fear is not your inheritance. And we get to overcome and dismantle fear by practising faith by applying and experiencing truth and by drawing near to God's perfect love for us. I don't know about you, but fear is not my future. I don't think that God wants it to be a part of your future either. It's because He's good and He's close and it's also the promise of His presence.